Temple. Welcome back to the Guitar Temple. Glad you're here as always. Did you tell a friend? Tell a friend. Tell a friend. They're your friends. Okay? Tell a friend of the Guitar Temple. And don't forget to tell them to uh, join, join all here at the Guitar Temple. Like and subscribe yourself and ring that bell. Ring the bell also. And I do appreciate that, honestly. Today, let's take a look at guitarist Jakey Lou Williams. Father was Welch and his mother was Japanese. Jakey Lou Williams is the lead guitarist of Dio. And after only 13 years of playing guitar, he ended up playing for Ozzy Osbourne. Also played for Rat. So he played for Rat, Ozzy Osbourne, Badlands, and Dio, as well as the Red Dragon Cartel. Stage name, Jake E. Lee. Let's take a look at guitarist Jake E. Lee. Die Hard fans, 
You will no doubt know the name Jakey e. Lee. Jakey e. Lee used to be Ozzy's guitarist till Ozzy threw him out of the band, saying that the guy just wasn't cut out for Ozzy's style of music. Now, Jakey e. Lee has serious fans of his own. Well, he formed another band with the Ray Gillum, who used to be the lead singer for Black Sabbath at one point, and together they formed a band called Badlands. And they did very few North American dates, but one of them they did was in Toronto at Rock and Roll Heaven. And uh, by the way, they are on the road now with Great White and Tesla. This is Badlands, an interview on Much Music. Oh, yeah. What does it feel like to go back to scratch down on the street level with people? In the gutter. Um, well, this is where we started, you know, so coming back to it is no big deal. first got together we we just jammed and when you jam it's like blues or old uh, cover songs and so we did both and we'd always warm up all our rehearsals with a, a blues song and uh, we didn't plan on being a blues based band but the more we jammed on it the better it felt and we said why not at, at the time it wasn't popular to do that and we didn't in fact some of the record companies said that, you know, we were, we were too bluesy, too old-fashioned sounding, and uh, there wasn't a market for it, but we didn't care. We kept on playing it anyway. As it happened, it came around, and it might have looked like we actually pre-planned it, but we didn't. Vocalist Ray Gillen and guitarist Jake E. Lee started to disagree over the sound of the band, and as the internal band relationships deteriorated, there were problems with the record label as well. It would come out years later that guitarist Jakey e. Lee had his own theory about what was going on with singer Ray Gillen in his personal life. In a 2019 Let There Be Talk podcast interview, he would reveal that Gillen was apparently diagnosed with HIV, which something at that point in time was connected with intravenous drug users or gay men. Lee would reveal that around the time Badlands formed, the pair discussed drug use and Gillen revealed that he had once tried heroin with his uncle, who was gay and HIV positive. Lee would reveal that Gillen never shared his diagnosis with him and claimed in between the first and second record, Gillen was starting to look very thin It didn't look quite as healthy. Further complicating matters was that the band's manager, who also produced the vocals on the first record, was a fellow named Paul O'Neill. O'Neill was accused of stealing money from the band and they subsequently fired him. The problem was he would turn around and tell their label Atlantic Records about Gillen's health diagnosis and the label pulled touring support for the group's second record. Making things worse was that Lee would talk to Kerrang! magazine in 1991 and reveal that Gillen had been fired after claiming the singer went behind the backs of his bandmates and told the record label that he had written a handful of potential hit songs but his bandmates wouldn't record them. Gillen would respond to Lee's accusations in Kerrang! claiming he wasn't happy with the quality of the material on the band's second album and wanted to keep writing to write more commercial songs, but the band disagreed. The bandmates traded barbs in the press, but the band had already booked a UK tour. The tour was almost cancelled when Gillen wanted to quit the band, but the promoter convinced him to fly overseas to play the gigs. During the tour, that's when things became even more contentious. During a show at the London Astoria on July 2nd, 1992, a few songs into the set, Gillen pulled out a copy of Kerrang! magazine that featured Lee's interview and told the crowd, there's two sides to every story, while Lee stood in shock and mouthed the words, it's all true. What's funny is that the reviews of the band's last shows with Gillen were praised by the press, and following the tour, it was reported that Gillen was fired. <laughs> Is it really? Play. Yeah, do you want to hear? Yeah. Uh-huh. You really want to hear? Yeah, I really do. Yeah, there's no water, there's no sound at all. No, it's because I am it. How loud is it really? Is that why you have the headphones on? Um, do you want to hear all that? <laughs> 
sounds great though. Oh, sounds so how do you feel about how the recording's been going? Uh, how do I feel about how the recording's been yeah. going? It's been going great. Uh -huh. Real good. Seems like you have an incredible amount of independence now to do, you know, what you want to do with your, with yeah, your solos gonna, and... We're getting away with murder, so what do you mean? No, I mean, you know, you can do what you want to do. Am I right about that? Yeah, yeah, that's one of the reasons we went with uh, titaniums. Because we can push them around a little more than we could a big company. Uh -huh. Is that one of the reasons why you wanted to break out on your own? Artistic no. freedom. No, the main reason was because I got fired. You keep saying that, but is that really true? Yeah. Well, yeah. why did that happen? I, I really don't know. You'd have to ask Ozzy. I really, he, I could tell you what he told me, but... What did he tell you? He said it was time I went on my own, and... Um, he, he just said we'd both be better off uh -huh. without each other. <laughs> kind of like breaking up a marriage. Did you feel like it was time to be on your own? I wasn't, I wasn't ready for it, uh -huh. but... Um, I mean, it all worked out for the best, yeah. Uh -huh. I, I think uh, Ozzy's insight was probably uh, well-timed. Uh -huh. So now you have your new band, a mm -hmm. new album coming out, and I guess it's a lot of pressure on you, huh? Mm, I guess it should be. I don't feel it. Uh -huh. um, I mean, to me, it's just a bunch of guys that came out of a garage and were putting some uh, music on tape, and, mm -hmm. and I don't feel the pressure. I mean, if the album does well, that'd be great. If it doesn't, I don't think anybody in the band is going like, to mm -hmm. leave because we're happy making the music we're making. Mm -hmm. People are going to feel the writing when you came in with with bark at the moon um you know did you bring songs because you had been in rat and you had been in other bands uh rough cut did you bring material that you had had to to those records yes uh, yes so a lot of the stuff that came in that we heard on ultimate sin and bark was stuff you had been sitting on for a while yeah yeah uh bark at the moon in particular when when i wrote it uh it was more of that L.A. feel at the time, you know, like Dawkins, uh, Motley Crue. It was, it was da dam pum pum pam pum pum pam pum pum. Then when I joined Ozzy, I was like, hmm, I think I can do something with this. And then I just had the da 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 and it turned into an Aussie song. Don't do that too long, because we have to pay for that if you do it for more than four seconds. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. I was yeah. We're into a class and we have yeah. no budget. I just, <laughs> I, just I just want something to clarify something really quickly right there, because something that he said very important. When he wrote it, and I'll leave it at that, Bark at the Moon, when he wrote it. But in that time frame, you obviously had, in the 80s time frame, you had Eddie Van Halen, obviously. The kingpin of kingpins for that. They changed era. everything. Changed everything for everyone. Everyone went, oh shit, now I gotta play like that. <laughs> uh, that's what the comment from most people was. Yeah. But of that era, there was Eddie Van Halen, there was like George Lynch, there was yourself, there was Warren. Yeah. Um, maybe Vivian Campbell. I'm coming up with like five like major players of that era. And you were one of them. Mm -hmm. So you were one of these guitar gods nice, of that. You. Of, of, no, but you were you you were one of the, you're you're right. Yeah. You were one of the guitar gods of that era, and you were widely accepted as a, as a guitar player pretty quickly. Um, and I mean, there were some other guys, of course, that were that were quite good. Yeah, you Brad, know, the, Brad the Gillis, Red Beaches, and the Brad Gillises, and, and the stuff. But those five 
of that era were the most, yeah, uh, you know. And that was the, iconic. The, the most the iconic. Guitar Hero 1980s. 80s era. Guitar Hero. Era. And, and I'm in that top five. Yeah, you're in top five. So. Do you know how many times I've watched the US Festival and you playing with Ozzy? At the US Festival. I mean, I mean, that was just, a good performance. Yeah. I mean, I do not. <laughs> I've watched it a million times, a gazillion times. And, um, well, speaking of that, we actually, if, I mean, Dave, you were leading somewhere. I don't want to cut you off. No, no, no. I just wanted to, to, to tell you that that's how people look at you. And, and it, this is a star that doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, well, see, but I'm feeling like that's how people look at me and don't know why I'm not like that anymore. And, and, and that, that does amaze me. I mean, uh, I've seen, you know, uh, there are obviously trolls online, but I've seen critiques of my uh, playing and my solos on Patina and shit like that. And they said, whoa, he was an 80s guitar hero. What the fuck is this shit? Well, this, this is what this happens 35 years later. If you don't lock in... When I joined Ozzy, I'd been playing guitar for 13 years. Mm. That is supposed to be the epitome of everything I can ever do on guitar. 13 years, I stick to that. That's all I ever will be. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by and I hope you enjoyed it with Jake Ely. Till next time, I hope to see you again. Don't forget now, join, join us here at the Guitar Temple, okay? Thanks for stopping by. Honestly, I mean it. Thank mm -hmm. you.